It's been 11 days since we last saw the Blue Devils, and they were losing that game at Boston College. So, Jason, they've had a lot of time to think about that loss, and they've also had a lot of time to work on their defense. A lot of time to practice, and they need it sorely. This is a team we understand is prolific on the offensive end. Their struggles happen on the defensive side of the floor. They have the length, the athleticism, the size. They can defend. But this is a team that must commit and want to get the job done on that end of the floor. If you think back to the Boston College game, the Eagles shot 50% from the field, 57 from three. The Blue Devils must improve, and it starts here tonight, here at home. Well, Coach Meisterszewski has been very clear about his feelings on his team's defense. And don't be fooled by their glitzy offense. They do have things that need improvement. Jumping center, Marvin Bagley and White for Duke. And he wins the tap from Danius Petkevichis. Got it out of the way the first time. Well, the Purple Aces out of the Missouri Valley, 10 and 2, but they are nowhere near full strength as a foul is called on K.J. Riley, who is really their third option to start the game at point guard, but this is what the Purple Aces are having to deal with tonight. Well, so many injuries, this is a team on the road, they're going to play man to man. They're going to try to keep the Blue Devils out of the lane, but you must send Trey Duvall to the ball screen, able to get to the baseline and draw a foul. Duvall, the freshman point guard out of Newcastle, Delaware. 0 for 2 from the line, tough start. For the rookie, let's take a look at the uh, players missing. Dwayne Gibson continues to miss time with a degenerative knee issue. Ryan Taylor, by the way, shooting nearly 50% like this team is. He's out at least for another week, although we saw him during practice today looking pretty good. Drew Smith, Solomon Heine, and three of those four, really, you could say are your three best players? Well, absolutely. Ryan Taylor's a big-time guy. Evansville executes flawlessly offensively, gets a layup, but at 6'11", Marvin Bagley, when he's the trail, top of the key, he's very comfortable knocking it down. So this is K.J. Riley at the point, making his third start. Grayson Allen knocks the pass out of bounds. Evansville will keep. And there is Coach K, 70-year-old Chicago native. And you will celebrate his 71st birthday coming up later this season on February the 13th. Of course, the winningest coach in NCAA history. You can see already the Blue Devils trying to extend their defense, trading the ball, putting a lot of ball pressure. But what do you do with pressure? You attack it. Riley puts his head down, drops that inside shoulder, able to get to the lane for a bank shot. Another trail three from a big. This time, though, Wendell Carter unable to connect. Well, Evansville, we haven't mentioned it, leads the nation in three-point shooting percentage at 49%. They don't shoot a ton of them, but they certainly are efficient under the direction of 11th-year head coach Marty Simmons. Marty Simmons, one of the best players in Evansville basketball history, doing a nice job with this depleted team at 10-2. and two, They found ways to win ball games. Tough task here on the road, but they're off to a nice start. So far, we've seen the Purple Aces controlling tempo. Shot clock down to five. The man they call DC is going to be called for traveling. Easier said than do done, uh, though, Jason, coming into a place like Cameron and controlling tempo. Oh, it's, it's very difficult. You want to try to keep the Blue Devils out of transition. You do that by taking good shots. The Blue Devils have let him off the hook. Two possessions. Biggs taking trail threes, knocking down one. And there you talk about team defense. Five guys must be connected. Once again, the ball screen is turned down. But K.J. Riley meets Grayson Allen outside of the lane. Takes the harm. Earns his team another possession. Once again, you see the Blue Devils extending their pressure, picking up 91, 94 feet. Focus has been defense. Let's do the job of keeping the Purple Aces out of the line. Riley dribbled that ball off his foot and out of bounds. 
Second turnover committed by the Purple Aces. There's a young man from the Bronx, New York, who uh, spent a year playing junior college ball in rural Texas. And uh, K.J. Riley said, quote, Texas was boring. So he's thrilled to be in Evansville, <laughs> Indiana now. But he has got himself a tough assignment here tonight, starting at the point on short notice against the number four team in the country. Back cut, Grayson Allen on the reverse. Grayson Allen overplayed, but the finish was spectacular. But how about a pass? Your 6'11 power forward. Doing a nice drop, dribbles at the guy. Grayson Allen gets the back of his head, uses the rim to shield the ball. Up and under and a nice fillet off the glass. The inbound comes to the coach's son, Blake Simmons. Got question leader of this team. Averaging 12 points per game. And he's among their terrific three-point shooters, but against an ACC power, getting open looked like that one might be difficult. Well, that's automatic. Coach Simmons talked about today at shoot around. His team having to help one another create open looks. Nice job there, but right back on the offensive end, Trey Duvall has been in attack mode early in this contest, able to beat his man to the baseline again. This is Noah Frederick, six foot four inch freshman with a basketball. John Hall feeds the post. He gets it knocked away. Ball comes back to the Purple Aces. Blocked out of bounds by Carter. And that's a picture of team defense. You see Bagley coming down, getting a deflection. The ball is loose. Blue Devils unable to come up with it. But with white jerseys gravitating to the basketball, and Carter goes up high to swat it away. Coach K has talked about this team must get better communicating and playing team defense. Individually, they have guys that have done the job, but as a team, as a unit, they must remain connected. Nice job on that possession. Off the baseline, out of bounds, got a good look. But John Hall missed the short bucket. Alex O'Connell has checked in for Duke, as has Marquise Bolden, who throws it down. You're a smaller team. If you're going to gamble, you better be sure you can get the ball. Blue Devils will throw over the top. Nice catch inside by Bolden. Easy finish for two. Jordan Goldwire, freshman from Norcross, Georgia, also into the game for Duke. Shot clock under 10. Three-point try by Hall's a little bit strong. Bolden clears the rebound for Duke. Blue Devils on top, 9-7. to seven. Lob inside Bagley, comes down with it, and he draws the foul. So the freshman Marvin Bagley III will be shooting free throws when we come back. First in Beaverton, Oregon. Full-size stature, Coach K. Basketball court with the name Krzyzewskiville on it. Deserving honor. Talk about over a thousand wins to really the face of college basketball for some years now. Coach K has won championships here, has led our USA team back to prominence, multiple gold medals. And this is as talented of a Duke team as he's had in some time, even dating back to the national championship 2015 team. But he's harped on if this team commits to playing defense collectively as a unit, they have a chance to be special. We've seen them come out and try to extend pressure. But can this young team maintain this pressure for a full 40 minutes? How tough is it for a young team, especially, to learn to communicate on defense? Well, that's the main thing. And a lot of defense is communicating, talking, understanding where you're supposed to be, and following your assignment. Offense comes easy to young teams. Defense is something you have to work on. And without adequate practice time, it becomes difficult. But early in this contest, the Blue Devils are doing a nice job on that end of the floor. In less than three weeks to start the season, Duke rattled off ten games on the schedule as Allen buries the three. And only in the last couple of weeks have they really had consistent time on the practice floor. It's a 9-0 run for Duke. Traore called for the charge. 
Well, bowl season rolls on tomorrow night with the bad boy mowers Gasparilla Bowl. The Temple Owls battle the 8-4 FIU Panthers at the Trop in St. Petersburg, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deport Base, and the ESPN app. 11sville has only eight healthy bodies, so not a lot of places for head coach Marty Simmons to turn on that bench as the Blue Devils continue to rattle things off. Wendell Carter with his first three. Well, let's pick your poison. You're dropping down to try to take away the high-low pass, big to big. But Wendell Carter's a guy that can knock down the three-point shot, 42%. His fourth make of the season. Not surprisingly, Duke has made its last five shots. Offense has not been a problem at all for this Duke team this year. Second in the country at over 93 points per game. Terrific distribution. Give the assist to Marty Hill and the bucket by D.C. And a nice job, Evansville. You have to attack pressure. You can't allow it to put you back on your heels. When you attack pressure, you have opportunities. The Blue Devils right now getting the job done on the offensive end. Live ball turnovers lead to easy opportunities. And they lead the timeouts called by Evansville. Back in 30 seconds. Success without integrity means nothing. Choose to strive for more, for better. Every hour of every day, be the man of today. Boss Bottle Tonic. Well, that statistic lays it out for you. What we've seen over the last five minutes especially, Duke forcing turnovers. And Jason, as you mentioned, live ball turnovers will kill any team. Well, when your coach challenges you to improve, you must show up when the lights are on and put the practice we've talked about to good use. The Blue Devils have extended their defense 94 feet. They're making Evansville uncomfortable on every catch and every drive to the basket. When you have active hands, active bodies, you can force turnovers. Blue Devils doing a nice job capitalizing, putting points on the board. Outside to Frederick King. His runner is good. First two points for the freshman who joined the starting lineup back on November 29th at New Mexico after Ryan Taylor went down. As mentioned, Ryan Taylor, number zero for Evansville, averaging over 21 points a game. Tried to practice Monday. It flared up. And so he continues to be sidelined as he recovers from that fracture in his foot. Frederick King known as a shooter. Nice drive there. That's a traveling violation called against Gary Trent Jr. Second turnover committed by Duke. Well, the good news for Evansville, first they are 10-2, and, and they are clearly better than what they were picked in the preseason MVC poll at number 9 out of 10 teams. But those guys are all supposed to be back by the time they get to the heart of their league schedule. And then you talked about Ryan Taylor. Four 20-point games already on this season. Dwayne Gibson, Drew Smith, veteran players who know what Coach Simmons wants to do, especially when you talk about going on the road. The team has a bright future once everyone becomes healthy. Well, you know what? The six foot nine inch, 240-pound junior from Lithuania had Kevichis seemed pretty comfortable in the paint against the Bigs of Duke. He's doing a nice job, and his guards are finding him. The screen and roll. The guards are keeping their head up. The dribble alive. The Blue Devils meeting them. But give D.C. a lot of credit. He's finding his spot, demanding his ground, and going right over the top of the Duke, Duke's towering front line. And Kevin just picks up his first personal foul. That's the fourth team foul against Evansville. Now give him five as John Hall, the redshirt freshman from Philadelphia, picks up his second. There's Marty Simmons. We saw the head coach at his alma mater. He's a 1987 graduate of Evansville. He spent his first couple of years at Indiana University before transferring to Evansville. 
at that time. He followed Jim Cruz. Jim Cruz, of course, former IU standout, assistant coach under Coach Knight. But uh, Marty Simmons went to Evansville, and as you alluded to earlier, Jason, he is on their ring of honor. He's one of the all-time greats in program history. And he's going to have his jersey retired. Number 50. We asked his son, is your dad going to allow you to continue to wear number 50? <laughs> Because it's my son, I will, but deserving honor for a great player and a guy who's doing an excellent job leading this Evansville program. And Marty Simmons wore number 50. His son, Blake Simmons, wears number 50 in honor of his dad. Some schools retire numbers. Some schools just honor numbers so they can be used again. And we've seen that here with Duke. Number 35 was in mothballs for Danny Ferry until he gave his approval to allow Marvin Bagley to use it this year. Absolutely. Offensive foul called against Marty Hill, the junior from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, has two. That's one of the few charges I've seen Marvin Bagley the third take this year. That shows what this team has worked on in practice. Defense, giving your body for your team, communicating, being where you're supposed to be in rotations. Nice job by the talented freshman. Grayson Allen. I think Wendell Carter was expecting that to be a pass. Yeah, I think not he a thought shot. that was going to be a lob, so he missed time to jump. Get off the ground for that rebound. Kevin Kuhlman with a basketball for the Purple Aces. Poked away by Bagley. Shot clock down to six. Under 12 minutes remaining here in the half. Riley denied. Well, Duke certainly has come defensively to play here tonight. When we come back, Santa Kay, he's coming to town. Heineken has been family owned since 1873. Outside of Boston College, must be better. Defense, we've talked about it length. And Trey Duvall, the costly intentional foul away from the basketball to seemingly end that Boston College game. Huge win at home for the Eagles. Duke's first loss of the season. Shot clock at one, and that's an air ball. So, well, maybe that middle stocking's going to have something different in it by the end of the night from Santa Cat. I don't know if it was cold going in there. I think it's actually wrapped gifts with bows on them. Because right now, early in this game, the Blue Devils are doing a nice job on the defensive end. But the big question, Doug, with a young team, can they commit to doing it for 40 minutes? Because we know they can do that for 40 minutes. Duval to Bagley, who's got seven. And there's another deflection out of bounds. Duke's defense is for seven turnovers so far. You see Duval make contact. Nice, solid screen from Grayson Allen. And lucky Trey Duvall, you can throw the ball to 12 feet and trust that 35 and White will climb the ladder and go get it. But what I like right now about the Blue Devils, they're picking up full court, putting a lot of pressure on Evansville, turning live ball turnovers into easy opportunities in the paint. Seven points for the senior from Jacksonville. This is the largest lead of the night at 27-13. The window for two. Nice looking shot by the freshman, Noah Frederick. And that's what Evansville wants to do. They want to lure you to sleep, take the time off the clock, and catch you slipping on the defensive end. Nice recognition. Easy two points with the floater off the glass. Blue Devils. Turn the ball over, give Evansville another opportunity to carve into this 12-point lead. a look at the 52-year-old native of Lawrenceville, Illinois, Marty Simmons. Illinois high school basketball legend went by the nickname of Mule because apparently he carried his teammates. There's his son, has the shot rattled out, a rare miss on an open three for the Purple Aces. On to 
find Bagley inside. Instead, shooting over top. What do you do? You've got the two McDonald's All-Americans bigs. One out, one in. You can't take everything away. You're forcing 6'11 guys to shoot the ball from three. And they're knocking them down. That's the third between the two of them already in this first half. Talented players. And Wendell Carter is such a talented player. A lot of times he's overshadowed by the great player Marvin Bagley. He's a guy that can play inside and he's showing right now. He can step outside and knock it down as well. Carter's 10 points here tonight. Lead all scorers. Here he goes again. Nobody even close to him. Wendell Carter was number five in last year's ESPN 100. And around here, that'll get you maybe a shrug of the shoulders. So much talent, especially on this freshman class. He shapes up nicely on the post, gets the entry feed, but missed the turnaround. Here's the young man from Atlanta. Pace Academy already five double doubles, which again is great, but he's got a teammate with twice as many. <laughs> well, Carter's a rebounding machine. You're talking about a guy with 37 offensive rebounds. He does a nice job carving out space inside, can score with either hand, and again, his versatility, which we haven't seen a lot of this season. But he's a guy that can put it on the floor, one or two dribbles, and get by his man, and we've seen him knock down the three-point shot. One of the best big men in all of college basketball. Coach Krzyzewski just went with pretty much a hockey line change, going deeper into the bench, bringing in Justin Robinson, who drew a big round of applause from the folks here at Cameron. Shot clock under five. Let's see what the call is. Jump ball. And the possession arrow will stay with Evansville. Marquise Bolden recognizing DC cut into the basket, meets him at 10 feet, pins it on the glass between the rim, and that's where Doug, that rule has to change. Blue Devils play defense for 30 seconds. Nice block shot, seemingly forcing a turnover. Gives the ball right back to Evansville. Marquise Bolden's going to be called for a foul. No doubt the Purple Aces caught a break there. That had been pinned between the rim and the glass a half a second later it would have been a shot clock violation and a turnover also in the game off the duke bench jordan goldwire freshman from norcross georgia who has seen limited playing time guys like uh, kim and mike buckmeyer are kind of the forgotten freshmen but are very talented regardless well if you're going to extend 94 feet, you're going to have to open up your rotation a bit. The Blue Devils have pressured this entire first half. In doing that, you're asking your bigs to extend from both ends of the floor. You must play more guys and keep fresh bodies on the floor. Robinson was the last to touch, so Evansville's possession will continue. The Purple Aces led 7-5 since that time. It's been all due. Play down to the post. Robinson picks up the personal, his first. Hey. The Duke students are now on break with finals being done. There are a lot of students here. The uh, student section is mostly filled with non-students. Of course, they can sell tickets anytime Duke takes the court. But uh, another capacity crowd. That's the way it is, this is the 428th straight sellout. Not since 1990 has been, there been an available seat for a Duke home game. Holden has it blocked out of bounds. Duke will keep. Well, Marty Simmons played two years of college basketball for that man, Bob Knight, 
What role did he play in the infant? You see him sweating through that sweater vest there. He has this program going in the right direction, doing a nice job pit night. I think they're going to surprise some people in the Missouri Valley. Jordan Goldwire, the recipient of a nice, nicely executed out-of-bounds play, three-ball corner pocket. 33-15, Duke with the lead. Evansville's gone cold, having not scored in three and a half minutes. Here's the coach's son, Blake Simmons. Of the available players on the active roster tonight, Simmons is the lead scorer at 12.3 points per game. Under five to shoot again. Duke's defense making it tough on the Purple Aces. Poked away by Trent. Here comes the Blue Devils. O'Connell's pass kicked out of bounds. Looked like he had an easy two-on-one lob to Gary Trent Jr. decided to go with the bounce pass. And Trent was pointing up <laughs> at half court. Throw it to the rim. Let me go get it. But Evansville, without a natural point guard on the floor, Riley doesn't recognize when the shot clock is starting to tick down, forcing late live ball turnovers. And because of that, Marty Hill, the junior from Brooklyn, he's checked in. He's more of a natural playmaker, a guy that can think the point guard position and possibly get the Purple Aces into a flow on the offensive end. Gary Trent still looking for his first points of the night. There is the list of outstanding players sidelined due to injury here tonight. Simmons off the mark. And Drew Smith averages 12 points per game. Ryan Taylor, 21 per game. Heine, four points per game. And Dwayne Gibson, eight per game. That's a lot of production to make up. And veteran production. Guys that understand how to play on the road, how to execute in tough environments. Last possession, Evansville got a good look. Those are shots against Duke you have to make. Shots equal long rebounds. That's a traveling violation. New Year's Day, we will have the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. Number three, Georgia. Number two, Oklahoma. Kick things off in the Rose Bowl game at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific from Pasadena. Then it's number four, Alabama. Number one, Clemson in the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Today was a huge day for college football, National Signing Day. And so for those fans of the Duke Blue Devils, trying to hope that their football team can make some headway. And you got to do it on days like today in the recruiting. Easy bucket for Wendell Carter. He's got a dozen. Evansville calls timeout. Well, it's tough to guard when a 6'11 forward takes you off the dribble to his weak hand, shall we say, his right hand. Able to get in the air, find his front court mate. Nice delivery, Wendell Carter, flawless footwork inside. Just two really talented young big men, which we don't see very often in college basketball. We have this year with these two. You look at DeAndre Ayton. Down in Arizona, Mo Bamba in Texas. The year of the young big man has infiltrated college basketball and two of the best on full display here. And I'll throw Jaron Jackson Jr. of Michigan State into it too. He Absolutely. is incredible also. Has the length, can knock down an open shot. Athletic big that has given Michigan State a huge boost on that front line to go next to Nick Ward. You saw what he and uh, the Spartans did to your alma mater out court. Absolutely. My goodness. Hills couldn't get a good look the entire game. Under six minutes to go first half. Tough entry pass to handle. Dalen Traore. And it's another Evansville turnover. Easy deuce for Duvall. Gets the foul call. That's not going to help you win a lot of games, especially on the road in the tough environment. No. Evansville 15 total points. The Blue Devils points off turnovers. 
Sitting it right now, 18. Duke doing a nice job pressuring the basketball, taking Evansville out of their methodical offensive sets. Forcing turnovers to get easy baskets. At the line, Blake Simmons. There's his dad as the uh, head coach. There's also another Simmons coming up the pipeline. A younger brother Cole is a freshman at Castle High School. And uh, Blake actually said Cole is probably the best shooter of the bunch. He said Cole is a guy that can flat out shoot the basketball. He's not on this trip. He's home studying for his exam. So Cole, good luck. Stay in those books. Get the job done. The Blue Devils get the job done. And Gary Trent, a guy along with Grayson Allen, they're the two shooters on this team. Their responsibility on the offensive end is to space the floor. Gary Trent Jr. has shot a hot basketball of late. Yeah, last couple of games coming into this one, Jason. 10 for 19. And he had struggled a bit through the first month of the season with that shot. Shot looked good. They just weren't falling. And now they're starting to fall at a very high rate. Simmons. And it's Bagley with the rebound. Grayson Allen, nothing but net. What Doug coaches tell you, don't shoot when you get a bad pass. When you're Grayson Allen, if you can see that orange ring connected to the backboard, you're open. Take it, knock it down. Big time three for the senior. Another turnover for us. Duvall ties up Simmons. You know, coming into this game, I thought it was Evansville that was the nation's leader in three-point shooting, but Duke is seven for nine tonight. And multiple guys. You think that's seven for nine? Well, Carter has two, Bagley has one, and Grayson Allen's knocked down one, and Gary Trent. When this team knocks down shots from the perimeter, they're going to be tough to beat. They're going to be a good team. When they defend as they have in this contest so far, they can be a special team. And make no mistake, this team has aspirations to win a national championship. To do that, they must commit for 40 minutes as a unit throughout on the defensive, defensive end of the floor. And we need to look no further than last year's Duke Blue Devils team that came in as the prohibitive favorite in November to win the national title. And they had so many problems and never even came close to living up to that potential. Marvin Bagley with a defender hanging on his arm earns a trip to the free throw line. The Duke Blue Devils, seven threes total in the first half, sharing the wealth. Gary Trent Jr. from the left corner, Grayson Allen, the same spot. Blue Devils, up big. ESPN's exclusive presentation. Free throw line. This is the first time since 2010 Duke has played a team from the Missouri Valley. In that game, they routed Bradley here at Cameron. And they've won six in a row over Missouri Valley Conference opponents. And you know, if, if Evansville was whole, I'm not saying they'd win this game, but it certainly would have a different feel, and they likely would not be down 30 here in the first half. Well, they're a different team when they're a full unit. And right now, if you're Coach Simmons, it's about competing at a high level in this contest, trying to execute, take something from this game. But you want to be healthy for conference play. And for Evansville, that starts Saturday, taking on Illinois State. I walked into the uh, stadium with the uh, Evansville players. They have to be getting off the bunch of uh, that bus as I was walking in, and I asked Coach Marty Simmons, well, are your juices flowing yet? Because if they're not, they're going to be. And you can just see on his face and the players' faces what a thrill it is to be here. Obviously, they'd like to show better. But you're playing a Cameron Indoor against two. You're playing against the number four team in the country. Ooh. A lot of these guys will be lottery picks come June. It's a chance to test yourself against one of the best in the country. And with so many injured players from Evansville on the floor, Simmons trying to box out, trying to do the job of keeping the 6'11 jumping jack off the boards. And I think there was a collective sigh throughout Cameron Indoor Stadium. And by a whole bunch of NBA general managers. Absolutely. Too. You don't want. Blake Simmons to get injured. He's invaluable to his ball club, but Marvin Bagley the third, one of the faces of college basketball. A guy that just as a freshman has seemingly dominated his position game in, game out. 
Well, Marvin Bagley is going to be a, a lottery pick and make a lot of money next year. Blake Simmons, well, he wants to be a teacher. He wants to be a coach like his father before. A couple of free throws for Bagley. He's into double figures now with 10. Just over three minutes remaining in the first half. Marty Hill now at the point for the Purple Aces, being guarded by Alex O'Connell. And the slam by Danius had Kevichis. Eight points to lead the Purple Aces. Even more impressive, Noah Frederick doing a nice job in the trap, staying patient for the five and finish. And Wendell Carter, he's been in his bag this entire contest. Showing his range from three. And there, a nice soft touch from 15 feet. Carter with 14 points to lead all scores. Again, Duke defensively working hard to make Evansville get off a shot late in the shot clock. Grayson Allen comes away with the basketball. Bagley turns, missed the bank shot. Got a good look, nice job by Allen to find him. Riley driving, his bounce pass comes to Duke. 12th turnover committed by the Purple Aces. Dumps it off, and a chance for three. The Blue Devils lethal in transition, especially when three in white catches the ball. He can shoot it seemingly from anywhere on the floor, so you must respect his outside shot. A straight line drive draws that second defender. Grayson Allen able to find Wendell Carter, takes the harm. Nice kiss off the glass and the bench into the game throughout this first half. Carter's career high is 20. Put that on Southern last month, and he's getting close to it already here in the first half. That is 17 points for the six foot 10 inch freshman from Atlanta. They say Duke was the last to touch, so Evansville will keep. No change of possession, so the shot clock stands at 16. You know what? Evansville's done a nice job finding Hat Kevages inside. He's been effective when he's been able to work in the post. He's done a nice job setting ball screens and rolling hard to the basket. But the Purple Aces haven't turned the ball over. It's done the job once again deep into the shot clock. And Doug, again, that's just not having a pure point guard healthy and on the floor. The Purple Aces don't recognize when the shot clock is ticking down, and when they do, it's too late. The Blue Devils smother them. They're going to get healthy. They're going to get guys back. Again, we talked about Brian Taylor, 21 points a game. Drew Smith, 12 points a game. Dwayne Gibson, he's a driver. You get these guys back, this is going to be a dangerous team in the Valley. Another slam dunk for Marvin Bagley, who has a dozen. Evansville's down to its third string point guard. There's easy pickings for Gary Trent. Off to the races and being unselfish, cost Goldwire a bucket. Well, Bagley sets a brush screen, but Grayson Allen, he looked off the defender by putting his eyes on Jordan Goldwire. That allows the defender to pause for a second, freeze Bagley up to roll to the basket unimpeded. A nice roll, but a great find from Grayson Allen. He's an excellent shooter, a dangerous driver with his athletic ability, but he's a guy that can flat out facilitate for this Duke Blue Devil team as well. And he can do that. Three Blue Devils in double figures, a 40-point lead. 
Grayson Allen, one for nine from three in that contest against Boston College. I'm shaking it off and come out and led this game on both ends. Yeah, perfect three for three from distance tonight. And Duke, with 21 made baskets, Jason, they have 18 assists. Only three unassisted made buckets so far here this evening. And that's win basketball. That's team basketball. It's about giving it up for a teammate right now in a white jersey, playing together. And, Doug, we know they're going to do it offensively, but I've been impressed with their commitment and their communication on the defensive end this first 20 minutes. We saw Grayson Allen go out after the senior captain picked up his second personal. Seven seconds remain in the half. K.J. Riley, Traore puts it up. Well, I'd say that the fourth-ranked team in the country has played much more like it tonight than they did 11 nights ago at Boston College. A dominant first-half performance, offensively getting the job done inside and from three, but defensively a commitment to do the job. Our halftime score, Duke 58, Evansville 18. Now we send you to Carl Ravage, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams in the studio. Thank you, guys. We talked about 50. It's 40 now, and the Zales have it. Stepping outside, knocking down. Not one, but two threes in the first half. And we understand one of the best bigs in college basketball can get the job done in the paint. Every one of those numbers there tell the story. Wendell Carter by himself has scored almost as many as the entire Evansville team. And that 31-3 run has the Purple Aces dealing with the fourth-ranked team in the country. Six, or rather eight steals for uh, Duke, and they forced 15 first-half turnovers by the Purple Aces. Blue doubles in the first half. Seven players with an assist. Five have made a three-pointer. All-around excellent effort on both ends of the floor. The possession arrow gives the ball to Duke, and so there is turnover number 16. At Evansville has a 10-2 record out of the Missouri Valley Conference. They beat Austin P in overtime on Saturday, won another game on Sunday. This is a proud program in uh, Evansville. They have been Division I since 1977. And a foul on the rebound. I wonder if Wendell Carter will say that was a pass. He missed it so far <laughs> to the left, didn't draw iron, banked off the backboard, right into the hands of Marvin Bagley the third. Well, that was that was interesting defense. I mean, Carter has shown the ability to knock down that shot, and I think you might have been closer to him defensively than any of the Purple Aces. Well, you have to play the averages. Coming into this game, it only knocked down three three-point shots. Well, he's made two in the first half, but you want him to continue to shoot if you're the opposition. Who you don't want to shoot <laughs> is Gary Trent Jr., a guy we talked about shooting a hot basketball entering this game. And what I like, Doug, he's staying within himself. He's taking shots when the bigs kick it out. His hands are ready. His feet are set. Play of supreme confidence right now. Trey Duvall called for the reach-in foul. Moments ago, the foul on John Hall for Evansville was his fourth. But yeah, Gary Trent Jr. is a perfect two for two on his threes tonight. And over the last three games, including that, he is 12 for 21. Confidence is a wonderful thing. He is feeling it. Another good look, but defended at the rim by Bagley to make D.C. miss the bunny. Well, that was a defensive breakdown. Bagley didn't rotate with the ball. When you're 6'11 and you're athletic, you can make up for those plays. But against better competition, light competition, that's going to be a dunk. Could possibly be an and one. You have to rotate with the ball. But tonight, Bagley's there late, but his length, his athleticism, turns that dunk a tip away. Three Blue Devils in double figures. Bagley with 12, Allen 13, Carter 17. Well, they left him open again, and this time he buries it. That matches his career high, 20 points for Wendell Carter Jr. You can play the averages, but when a guy is shooting 50% in this contest, the scouting report has to change at some point. He's shooting the ball like he plans for it to go in each time he lets it go. 
Grayson Allen feeds Marvin Bagley on the post, switches to the left hand and lays it in. 14 points for the freshman from Phoenix, Arizona. And an early timeout called by Marty Simmons of the Purple Aces. Duke rolling to a 12th win on the year. Mark, in this contest, his hands are ready, his feet are set, his eyes are locked on the rim. With 20 points, he's outscored the Evansville ball club and done it, Doug, in a variety of ways. We've seen him get the job done inside, face up in the short corner and knock down a J and three for six from three. Well, it was him who was the 2017 Morgan Wooten National High School Player of the Year. You know, his dad uh, of the same name played college ball at Delta State. His mom played at Ole Miss. It is no surprise that Wendell Carter Jr. has come in and been as good as advertised this year for Duke. Wide open one more time. Why not? Well, right now, every coach in the country that's going to face Duke is putting a star beside the name of Wendell Carter. That indicates he can make a shot. He can knock down a three-pointer. Number four on the evening for 34 and white. Evansville gets those three back off the triple by Evan Kuhlman, freshman from Liberty Township, Ohio. Duval, nice dump off. And the flush. Give Carter 25 and counting. A lot is made of Trey Duval not being a great shooter. But what he does for this team, he takes care of the basketball. He's a true point guard that gets everybody involved. He has over 80 assists already on this season. Number four in the nation. Once he develops a jump shot, he's going to be an excellent player. Friday, we'll have another star-studded NBA doubleheader to tip off your weekend. At 8 p.m. Eastern, DeAndre Jordan and the Clippers are in H-Town to take on James Harden, Chris Paul, and the streaking Rockets, who have won 13 in a row. Then we'll take you to Oracle for Lonzo and the Lakers squaring off against KD and the Warriors, who, by the way, have won eight straight themselves. Coverage tips with NBA Countdown, 7.30 Friday on ESPN and the ESPN app. Give Trent three more. He's got 11 after a quiet first half. Marquise Bolden into the game for Duke, defending the post. Nice job by big number 20. Allen has his pass kicked out of bounds. We'll take a break with a media timeout here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Holiday Hoops presented by Zales as Duke puts a lump of coal into the stocking of the Evansville Purple Aces. How about the performance of Trey Young yet again yesterday? The Oklahoma sensation matching an all-time NCAA Division I single game record with 22 assists, Jason. He is dominating college basketball, Trey Young leads the country in points and assists and does it in an efficient manner. Makes everyone better, takes care of the basketball. He can make the fundamental play, he can make the flashy play. He is the early front runner for National Player of the Year, in my opinion. And right now, I don't think it's close. He's dominating college basketball from the point guard position. Because of his play, he has the Sooners playing excellent basketball as well. Okay, I was going to ask you two questions about Trey Young. You just answered one. So you say he is definitely the front runner for the uh, Wooden Award. Bolden with the block. Here comes O'Connell on the run. Marquise Bolden, the block shot keeps it in play. And Coach Cutcliffe may take a look at that clip and <laughs> see that out route. The out route, out route strike for an easy dunk by O'Connor. Talk about Trey Young. I mean, you look at the guys. I mean, Marvin Bagley third has to be in that conversation. But no one is dominating to that magnitude. This is a guy that's six foot, six one. You have 22 assists. <laughs> you have 29 points. By yourself, you're, you're putting 76 points on the board for your team. 
he, he's dominating. He's an excellent player, and at the point guard position, if you have that, that extension of the coach, and Coach Kruger is an excellent coach, your team is going to have a chance. Well, the next seven games for Trey Young and the Sooners all on the ESPN networks beginning Friday against Northwestern here on ESPN 2 at 7 o'clock Eastern time. So my other question was going to be, so who's your best freshman in the country? Because we have three headlining freshmen all averaging better than 20 and 10. DeAndre Ayton in Arizona, better than 20 and 10 with points and rebounds. Here we've got Marvin Bagley, better than 20 and 10. And oh, by the way, Trey Young, better than 20 and 10, leading the nation in both scoring and assists. Well, you say who's the best. I think uh, these guys are going to be in the NBA next year. And you have a point guard, you have a guy that can flat out score the ball in Colin Sexton, and you have the unicorns. You have DeAndre Ayton that can step outside and knock down threes, who's as physically imposing as anyone in college basketball we've seen in some time. And Marvin Bagley the third, a guy that can do a little bit of everything, the evolution of the game, what it's become. These guys encompass just that. Guys that can shoot it, can space you out, and have that attack mentality on both ends. And once again, Wendell Carter Jr. is left off of one of these lists. And oh, by the way, he's got 25 points tonight, a new career high. He's averaging 13 points and nearly nine rebounds a game. If Wendell Carter plays for anybody else in the country. He's averaging 20 points and probably 10 rebounds. He just happens to be matched up on the front line with Auburn Bradley the third. But make no mistake, the opposition that Duke is going to face throughout the season, they know how good Wendell Carter is. Hill steps into a three and buries it. Hardy Hill, junior from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. There's Carter taking a break, a well-deserved break. Ennisville knocking down back-to-back -back three point shots. Getting into a little flow offensively. Force Duke to miss. He must put a body and finish it with a rebound. Two consecutive offensive boards for the Blue Devils. Marquise Bolden fighting for the basketball with KJ Riley. And the foul is called. And it goes against Bolden. He picks up his second. Duke playing that sequence with four reserves. And so now Coach K goes back with some of his starting unit, bringing Carter and Allen back onto the floor. Coach K has gone deeper into his bench in this contest. You saw it in the first half. Giving more guys playing time. When you're trying to extend your defense, if you want to play 94 feet, you're going to have to extend your rotation. Oh, Jordan Bowire gave him great minutes. Alex O'Connor, who's in that rotation, Energizer Bunny, a guy with a live body. These second unit guys have come in and done a nice job. Well, remarkably, this is Duke's only game in a 21-day stretch. Three weeks they're playing one game first three weeks of the season they played 10 so what do you do here if you're you know you're blowing out Evansville the game is well in hand but you don't have an opportunity for much game action for Grace Allen and the other starters do you keep Grayson and the boys in or do you just let the reserves go out there and do their thing well as a coach you want to get better coach K has challenged this team to improve they're good he wants them to be special because they have that type of ability to be special you want these guys to show that they can not worry about the score right now. Not worry that it's a 50-point game. Come out and execute. For however much time you're on the floor, do the things you've practiced over this 11-day stretch of not having a game. Don't worry about tomorrow. Finish this game. Do the right things. Prepare for who you want to be, not, new, not who you are right now with 12.35 to go of 50. Justin Robinson, the son of Hall of Famer David Robinson, getting extended minutes tonight. He played in the first half, again off the bench in the second half. Wendell Carter now with 27 points, extending his career high. Well, from here, Duke will go on its Christmas break and won't have to be back until Tuesday the 26th. So it's a, an interesting stretch for all of college basketball. As you get through finals, then you get through holidays, you go from playing a game every other day to playing one game every week, and, and it's a different rhythm that you've got to get used to. Off the steel, Goldwire has an easy two. It's a different rhythm, Doug, and more importantly, you're headed into conference play where the game goes up a notch, the intensity goes up a notch. This is a young team. 
They're talented, but they're young. Coach K has told this group they're going to have less experience than everybody they play this season, but they have the talent and they can gain that experience as the season progresses. But well, we've got a treat for you when we come back. We will have Zesky. S H E C E T Michael Jordan. <laughs> That's really close. You're a few letters off. K-R-Z-Y-Z-E-W-S-K-I. Zesky. What's your favorite food? I like cheese grits. I hate them. Oh, you hate them? How do you hate them? I like cereal and waffles, cinnamon waffles, but no gluten-free waffles. <laughs> Chicken nuggets on three. One, two, three. Chicken nuggets! I love it. I agree. No gluten free for me. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, give me the real thing. Absolutely. But, uh, nice to see Grayson have a little fun there. Nice he can spell his coach's name, K R Z Y Z W S K I. But is it me or did he mispronounce his coach's name? He had an emphasis on the Z. And that's not how I've heard it pronounced, but he's around him every day. Right. Maybe he knows something that's not passed down to us, but he spelled it right. He, he gets did. a gold star for that. Even with that thing in his mouth. Absolutely. Yeah. That was impressive. No question. With the hot seat with the four young kids. Uh, Grayson Allen's number three will, at some point, be up in the Raptors probably here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, along with the other greats in the history of this program. And, uh, you know, in this day and age, you won't get talent like Grayson Allen staying around for four years. And so his career numbers will wind up ranking up with some of the all-time greats. And the job he did on that national championship team, they him coming into the contest against Michigan State. The effort he put out diving on the floor for a loose ball, giving a jolt of energy to the Blue Devils, then another solid performance in the championship against Wisconsin. Right then, he forever put his name in the history books. A guy that didn't play a lot during the year, he came up big in big moments. And he comes up big there, coming off a screen. Doug, his feet get set so quickly, he gets his shoulder square. Good shooters, when you can have those two things in line, you have a good opportunity to knock it down. Off the steal! Jack White brings the house down! What's great about that play, no one was happier then Grayson Allen, he jumped with Jack White as he was going up to that jam. Your senior leader doing a nice job being a great teammate as well. And we've got to take another look at the sophomore from Australia averaging 0 0.6 points per game. So thinking about defensively, deflecting the pass, denying the entry to the sideline, deflected it with the correct hand, kept it in play. And Jack White, a big-time athlete, knows what to do in transition. Going up high for the emphatic jam. Foul called on Trent. 87-31. Duke closed out the first half on a 31-3 run to put this one away. There's Grayson Allen, the all-time active career scoring leader in the ACC. He's got 16 tonight to give him 1,646 for his terrific Duke career. Strong drive to the bucket by John Hall. First points for the redshirt freshman from Philadelphia. Duval. Pretty move, just couldn't finish. Space to operate in the lane now. Evansville will keep. Bowl season rolls on tomorrow night with the bad boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. The Temple Owls battle FIU at the Trop, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app.
Now, we've talked a lot about the injuries for Evansville. We uh, haven't said about Duke ah. missing one of its key reserves. Javin Delorier out with a hamstring. But it certainly has not hindered the Blue Devils this evening. Well, it's given other guys opportunities. Saw in the first half, Justin Robinson playing minutes. George Goldwire able to come in and play good minutes. Next man up, when a guy's down, it's your opportunity to show and prove that you can gain the trust of your coach. Everybody in the white jersey has done just that. As Marvin Bagley the third cuts across the lane with the sky hook, if you will, with the left hand. That was kind of an old school running sky hook. Absolutely. But he finishes up high, has a soft touch everywhere on the floor. It's not a lot this kid can't do on the offensive end. Bagley second in the ACC in scoring at over 21 points per game. He's got 16 and counting tonight. Five in the shot clock. Big luck shot for Antonio Vrankovic, the junior from Croatia. Draws a crowd of purple jerseys, dribbles out. Why not? After making a terrific cut down the lane, Bagley is rewarded. He just moves so effortlessly on the floor. He can seemingly move his way through a crowd of people. Excellent footwork, the body control. Nice finish inside by the freshman. John Hall puts up an air ball. That is 12 points now on the putback by Hat Kevichis. Kevichis has battled throughout this contest. Multiple bodies being thrown at him. He's done the job rolling to the basket, having a nose for the ball, chasing down that air ball. Duvall nearly dunked on everybody in purple. 91-35 all Duke. Marvin Bagley the third. Our family to yours. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing after I open up my gifts on Christmas morning is sitting down to watch a lot of ESPN and ABC. That's pretty good. Great basketball, great matchups. I think we're all excited about the matchups, but when you look at Cleveland and Golden State, that's one you circle. I hope it's Steph Curry recovers from that ankle injury and he suits up. Those two teams look like they may be on another collision course, but look out for the Houston Rockets. That addition of Chris Paul. With James Harden, those guys knocking down three-point shots. Eric Gordon. Shot clock down to three for Evansville. Marquise Bolden with another block shot. I find it fascinating, the splits for the Rockets between when Chris Paul's on the floor by himself yes. to when James Harden's on the floor by himself and when they're out there together. Well, Harden has help. I thought he wore down last season. And Chris Paul is a leader. He facilitates. But he's knocking down shots right now because he's getting open looks because they're so talented. And the Blue Devils have shot a hot basketball throughout. Multiple players have knocked down three-point shots throughout this contest. Alex O'Connell, a live body, an energetic player. He's going to be a good one here for the Blue Devils. He only got a couple of minutes in their last game against Boston College, and he's taken advantage of his extended playing time here tonight. Seven points and counting for number 15 in white. Rankovic, his first two. Well, Duke has exceeded its season average of 93.3 points per game with just under five minutes remaining. Off the turnover, here comes O'Connell again. Nice looking runner gives him nine. Doug, that possession is exactly what I'm talking about. 
These young men want to earn the trust of Coach K. They want to play more. They're committed defensively. Goldwire with the steal. O'Connor with the finish. This is where you earn your keep. It's not mop up minutes. It's time to get better. We'll step away with Duke nearing 100. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zale. He tied Hubert for uh, the all-time list there at UNC in their tremendous win Sunday in Knoxville. Here's a, the preseason media poll in the ACC, and is that fair right now as we head toward the new year, Jason? You think Duke won, Carolina two? I do, and I think it's a very slim margin because the Tar Heels, in my opinion, have the best leader in college basketball and Joel Berry and the most improved player in Luke May. They have so many guys that have stepped up and improved. Kenny Williams, much improved player. Theo Penson, the facilitator, a jack of all trades, Swiss Army Knight type of guy. The Tar Heels are very talented. A tough road win at Tennessee coming from behind. But the ACC has a lot of very good teams. Miami's loaded. Lonnie Walker, the standout freshman, is finding his way playing great basketball. It's going to be a fun regular season, ACC season, this, this year. Under four minutes remaining in regulation. This one's been all Duke since a 31-3 run to close the half. And there's three points for Justin Robinson. You want to see it rain? Let it rain. Everyone in on the action. The Purple Aces have dropped the second big into the lap of the post player. And the trail bigs of Duke have teed off from the top of the key throughout this game. Hill rises up. Robinson the rebound. Pretty much everybody off the Duke bench has contributed. Robinson tries again. Two for two. Partner, you know guys are feeling good when they start the the backwards trot <laughs> toward the <laughs> other end of the floor as soon as they let it go. And look at O'Connell still defending. The rest of the Blue Devils certainly seem to have gotten the message from Coach K. Well, make no mistake, this game has been a blowout. It's been dominated by the Blue Devils. But this staff will watch this game at the conclusion. And guys will be picked a part of what they did well as a team individually and how they can improve. So everyone is right on cue to do what they're supposed to do for the remainder of this game. If you want to earn time on the floor when the lights are on. Seven to shoot. O'Connor kicks to the corner for White. Offensive foul. Coming up on SportsCenter after the DXL Frisco Bowl on ESPN, we'll tell you who Dabo Sweeney is using to motivate his team as they get ready for Alabama. Plus, a unique look at James Harden's history-making start as the Red Hot Rockets look for 15 in a row. And a report from the Cowboys practice facility on how Jason Garrett plans to use Ezekiel Elliott Sunday against the Seahawks. SportsCenter with Nicole Briscoe and John Anderson on ESPN and the ESPN app. Jason Cable, I understand there is somebody in the building here tonight inside Cameron Indoor Stadium who uh, used to beat up on you. Is that right? Yeah, there's a guy down uh, sitting on the Duke bench who was a good player here, four-year starter, point guard. I was much smaller. He was five years older. He gave me the business, but it made me tougher. Oh, there he is. And there came a time when little brother became big little brother. No <laughs> <laughs> beating stop, but... My best friend, someone I'm proud of, is doing an excellent job here at Duke. I enjoy any time I'm in the area where we get to spend some time together and go to his house and eat up his food. <laughs> and get the cousins together, Absolutely. And, uh, especially at holiday time. Absolutely. And I know for your family, especially this year, it's so good that you're able to spend so much time together as Christmas New Year's. Yes, sir. It means so much. It's been time with Cameron and... Sydney and Elijah, nieces and nephews. Always good being around family. Frederick King for three. 
Now you say little brother became big brother. What are you now, 6'8"? I'm 6'8". You know, my mom is six feet tall, so I think I, I pulled it from her a bit. And my brother's around 6'4". He had the athleticism. I had the size. Okay. <laughs> Neat move, unable to finish it though, was Mike Buckmeyer. Shot clock is off. That's about the only thing that has not gone Duke's way tonight. Robinson with the rejection. Now the three-pointers are something that has Pop didn't do, but that block shot is something we saw from the Admiral. Justin Robinson having himself a day, knocking down three-point shots and doing the job defensively as well. Foul committed by O'Connell. Well, Coach K has won over 1,000 games himself. Of course, his Duke program goes back more than a century, but uh, the margin right now, if it stands, would match the fourth largest margin of victory in the illustrious history of the Blue Devils program. And the Cameron Crazies still doing their thing, despite being up by... I'm a Syracuse grad. How, how big is the... Uh... <laughs> I carry the one. 65. Down to 64. And it looks like Mike Buckmeyer's not going to take another shot. Duke stressing defense for the last 11 days holds Evansville to 40. The Blue Devils, a dominant performance, doing the job defensively, force of turnovers, creating easy opportunities offensively. You want to be a champion, you have to do it on both ends. The Blue Devils did for 40 minutes. That's it from Durham. Our final score, Duke 104, Evansville 40. Now we send you to Carl Ravage in the studio along with Seth Greenberg and Jay Williams.